Hi everyone. Today we will discuss about non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. How these non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to be developed. The first non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker is the D-tubocurarin. This is well known as DTB. This D-tubocurarin is a natural product and commonly known as arrow poison. In olden days, this drug is used as a skeletal muscle relaxant during the hunting of the animals. But as a neuromuscular blocker, it is having few of the limitations. The D-tubocurarin is one of the long-acting neuromuscular blocker, but many of the times, in few of the surgical procedures, we require the muscle relaxation for a short period and the patient has to recover from the muscle relaxation very easily. But the D-tubocurarin produces a prolonged paralysis in the patient and this drug is also having few of the side effect profile like the bronchospasm and hypotension and because of all these limitations d is not a an ideal drug in this category then another drug that is going to be developed is the galamine again galamine is having one of the limitation this drug is not selective for the neuromuscular junction it is also having some action on the muscanic receptors particularly at the m2 receptors because of its action at the m2 receptors galamine can produce the tachycardia. In this way, galamine produces cardiovascular side effects. So then a group of synthetic uh, neuromuscular blockers are going to be developed among which the side effect profile is going to be minimized as well as the duration of action is going to be reduced in order to produce a muscle relaxation for a shorter period. Now let us see what are the different types of drugs which are classified as non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. The first one is the curare alkylides. Curare alkylides are going to give one of the drug d tubocurarin and already we have discussed this drug. This is one of a natural product but one of the limitation of this drug is it is long acting. But still this drug acts as a lead compound and it can give them a number of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers which have the suffix derived from these curare alkylides. So the next group of uh, drugs having the suffix is the curonium. So, onium indicates they are having a quaternary ammonium group. So, drugs in this class include the pancuronium, pipicuronium, vicuronium, rocuronium. All these are ending with the same suffix curonium. So, these are the synthetic non depolarized neuromuscular blockers. They are structurally related with the D tubocurarin. And another group is having the suffix curium. So, drugs in this class include atracurium cis atracurium cis atracurium is the cis isomer of the atracurium and doxacurium and finally mivacurium all these are the non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers so non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers can have a suffix like either curonium or curium and if we classify these drugs based on their duration of action the first three drugs like the d tubocurarin pancuronium and pipicuronium all these are long acting neuromuscular blockers and similarly, the last drug Mivacurium is a short-acting neuromuscular blocker and the remaining drugs like the Vicuronium, Rocuronium, Atracurium, Cisatracurium, Doxacurium, all these are intermediate-acting neuromuscular blockers. So if we remember the, what is the long-acting and short-acting, we can, the remaining drugs are intermediate-acting. Now the Atracurium is one of the drugs which is given by the IV injection and is having the chemical instability Particularly in the vial, it is having an acidic environment where it is stable. But when this atracurum is going to be injected into the body, atracurum which is present in the plasma and the plasma pH is around 7.4. So at this pH, the atracurum is unstable. And because of this, atracurum will undergo fragmentation, thereby shows its action for an intermediate period. So that's why atracurum is having a duration of action less than 30 minutes. Similarly, another drug is the Mivacurium. Mivacurium is converted to its metabolites by one of the enzyme plasma choline esterases. So these plasma choline esterases will cause the metabolism of the any ester related drugs which are present in the plasma. Since it is immediately metabolized by this plasma choline esterases, Mivacurium is a short acting neuromuscular blocker. And the duration of action of Mivacurium can be observed as less than 15 minutes. Now let us see how these non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers are going to act. 
at the neuromuscular junction the cholinergic nerve terminals are present and at the postsynaptic membrane we can observe the few of the receptors these receptors are the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors these nicotinic acetylcholine receptors are inotropic receptors made up of five subunits so they are pentameric in nature and we can also found another type of receptors on the presynaptic nerve terminal these are again the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors but these receptors are auto stimulatory in nature so when this acetylcholine binds to these receptors they will stimulate the release of the acetylcholine from the synaptic vesicles now here the non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers will act as antagonists at the both postsynaptic as well as presynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors these non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers can block all the sites of the acetylcholine binding site on the postsynaptic membrane so that they are going to occupy the active sites of the acetylcholine and they can also block the presynaptic nicotinic acetylcholine receptors thereby they inhibit the auto stimulatory effect of this acetylcholine in this way non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers can block the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at both postsynaptic membrane as well as at the presynaptic nerve terminals now when the action potential reaches to the nerve terminal calcium mediated exocytosis will cause the release of the acetylcholine this acetylcholine will try to bind to these uh, acetylcholine binding sites but it is unable to bind because they are already blocked by non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers so when our acetylcholine is going to try to bind to the presynaptic receptors again it cannot bind So in this way acetylcholine is not able to bind to this nicotinic acetylcholine receptors and it will be remain within the synaptic cleft but here the acetylcholine esterase enzymes which are present at the membrane bound they can act on these free acetylcholine molecules present in the synaptic cleft and they can cause the hydrolysis of this acetylcholine so in this way acetylcholine cannot bind to the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors as well as it is immediately hydrolyzed by acetylcholine esterase enzymes and since acetylcholine cannot bind to the postsynaptic receptors it cannot open the sodium channels so sodium is not entering into the postsynaptic membrane and it cannot depolarize the postsynaptic membrane in this way non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers act as antagonists thereby they inhibit the action of the acetylcholine but these drugs are going to produce a competitive inhibition that means when the acetylcholine levels are going to be increased the block produced by these drugs is going to be reversed this is one of the advantages in the treatment of overdose of these non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers so when we use the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors they will inhibit the enzyme acetylcholinesterase enzyme this results in the increased levels of acetylcholine within the synaptic cleft thereby they will antagonize the action of the non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers therefore acetylcholinesterase inhibitors act as antidotes for these non depolarizing neuromuscular blockers Now let us see the pharmacological actions of non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. First, let us see their action on the skeletal muscle. These drugs are not acting like the saxamethonium, which is a depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. So, since these drugs are acting like antagonists and they are not having any agonist activity on the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors, so these drugs will not produce any initial muscle fasciculation. That means they will not produce any initial muscle contractions, and that's why these drugs cannot produce any post operative pain but since these drugs act by competitive inhibition at the postsynaptic receptors so they mainly produce the muscle paralysis but which group of muscles are initially affected so small muscles are initially affected then the muscle paralysis is going to progress to the large muscles and small muscles like the eye face limbs pharynx all these are going to be affected which can be observed as few of the symptoms in the patients when the extensing muscles are relaxed it leads to the double vision and when the pharynx is going to be relaxed it leads to the difficulty in swallowing and after the small muscles they can affect the large muscles particularly they can affect the diaphragm and intercostal muscles which may lead to respiratory depression if the dose is not properly adjusted so these drugs going to produce an induction from the small muscles to the large muscles but the recovery is quite opposite the large muscles are initially recovered followed by the small muscles and another one is the heart actually these drugs are mainly acting on the neuromuscular junction but few of the drugs like the pancuronium they can have few of the effect on the heart 
So few of the drugs like the pancuronium can act on the M2 receptors, thereby they can increase the rate of contraction, so they can lead to the tachycardia. So pancuronium, in addition to blocking the nicotinic acyl receptors, it can also block the M2 receptors, thereby it produces a vagolytic activity. Vagolytic activity is nothing but the parasympatholytic activity. Pancronium acts as an antagonist on the nicotinic acyl receptors as well as it also acts as an antagonist at the M2 receptors. Because of this antagonism at these M2 receptors, it can increase the rate of contraction of the heart, so it can lead to the tachycardia. Next one is the mast cells. The drug like the D-tubocurarin, which is a natural product, can act on the mast cells. These mast cells are having the histamine. And when this drug is going to acting on these mast cells, they produce a degranulation of the histamine. So histamine is going to be released into the plasma. And this histamine can act on the lungs, thereby it can produce some bronchospasm. And histamine can also act on the blood vessels. It produces a vasodilatation. This vasodilatation can be observed as a hypotension as one of the side effects in the treated patients. So d tubocurarin is having two important side effects. One is a bronchospasm and second is the hypotension. And next one is the ganglia. Ganglia is the autonomic ganglia. We know that autonomic nervous system is made up of two neurons. In between these, a junction is going to be produced which we call the ganglia. And at the post-ganglionic neurons, we can observe a few of the receptors which, which are again nicotinic acyl receptors commonly denoted as NG. Here G indicates ganglionic. Now acetylcholine which is released from the presynaptic nerve terminals can act on these NG receptors thereby it can stimulate the postganglion neurons which release the neurotransmitters like the norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is one of the important mediator in the sympathetic system. This norepinephrine can act on the target organ so that it can produce few of the physiological actions. So suppose if it acts on the blood vessels it can increase the vasoconstriction thereby it increases the blood pressure. So here the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker act as antagonist at the nicotinic acetylcholine receptors present at the ganglia. Thereby they prevent the action of the acetylcholine on these receptors. So when acetylcholine is not going to act on these receptors, the ganglionic transmission is going to be inhibited. So this may result in variable effects on the physiological system and one of the important effects that can be observed is the decrease in the blood pressure. Because blood pressure is going to be maintained by sympathetic system, but when this sympathetic transmission is prevented by inhibition of the ganglionic transmission, the blood pressure is going to be reduced. So in this way, the drugs like the d tubocurarin and atracurium can produce a ganglionic block and they produce the hypotension. And here we can observe that the d tubocurarin produces hypotension by two ways. It can release the histamine which produces hypotension as well as it blocks the ganglia, thereby again it produces a hypotension. Now let us the side effects of uh, neuromuscular blockers. One of the important side effects already we have discussed is the hypotension. So drugs like uh, D-tubocurin is mainly producing the hypotension and as already we have seen the hypotension produced by DTP is because of ganglionic block as well as by release of the histamine. And few of the other drugs like the Mivacurium and Atracurium can also produce hypotension but their hypotensive effect is somewhat less compared with the d tubocurarin Similarly, these drugs can also produce a bronchospasm. Again, you can see that d tubocurarin can produce a bronchospasm because of the release of the histamine. And this is particularly important in the asthmatic patients or patients with the respiratory disorders where the d tubocurarin should be carefully given because it produces a bronchospasm and it can precipitate the respiratory depression. And the other side effect is the tachycardia. So all we have seen the pancuronium is one of the drugs which can produce a tachycardia by acting on the M2 receptors. And other drugs like pipicuronium can also produce a tachycardia. Pancuronium can increase the blood pressure so it produces hypertension because of cardiovascular side effects. Previously we have seen that d tubocurin produces hypertension but pancuronium produces hypertension because of its cardiovascular effects. Similarly, prolonged paralysis. If you have the long-acting drugs like the vecuronium, pancuronium and d tubocurarin can produce a prolonged paralysis and these drugs can produce some slow recovery in the patients. 
Now let us see the antidotes for the recovery. This is very important because when these drugs are given at a high dose, they can produce the muscle paralysis and it should be restored immediately after the surgery. But if it is not restored, it can produce a prolonged paralysis and uh, dysfunction in the particular skeletal muscle. So here we can use the acetylcholinesterase inhibitors like the neostigmine. Neostigmine is a medium acting acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. This drug is going to inhibit the acetylcholinesterase enzyme thereby to increase the acetylcholine levels within the synaptic cleft. And already we have seen that uh, non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers act by competitive inhibition. And since the neostigmine increases the acetylcholine levels within the synaptic cleft, this can decrease the inhibition of the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So when our neostigmine is given, the block produced by non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers can be reversed because of the elevated levels of acetylcholine within the synaptic cleft. Similarly, for treating the toxicity of the rocuronium, we can give the cyclodextrin. This cyclodextrin acts as a complexing agent and it can form a complex with the rocuronium so that this complex is an inactive complex. So for non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers, acetylcholine esterase inhibitors like the neostigmine acts as an antidote. And we can also use a few of the complexing agents like the cyclodextrin which form an inactive complex thereby they will inhibit the action of the non-depolarizing neuromuscular blockers. So that's for today. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.